a tough discussion. Um, so I'll, put, I'll talk about the side chain. Uh, it's a side chain, Ethereum 1.0, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, one very exciting feature. Native token of this side chain is Dai, right? And this Dai is bridged from uh, Ethereum network. Um, and uh, we actually we build this side chain on ETH Berlin Hackathon, which is exciting. Uh, uh, we didn't uh, build it on the hackathon because we were sponsors, but we um, created the idea and do some, some prototypes. And after it, uh, in about three weeks after it is building hackathon, we uh, uh, partnered with MakerDAO and launched the side chain. Uh, but to understand um, how we uh, how we figure out this idea, I'd like to talk a little bit about VUA and uh, other side chains. Um, so VUA core is a side chain based on uh, on the parity theorem with uh, smart contracts which define governance and the uh, zebra control mechanism of this uh, uh, of this side chain. Also, native token of this side chain is paired to Ethereum. Uh, it means that native tokens can be transferred back and forth using uh, custodian of the bridge. And uh, the bridge is an essential part of uh, uh, of this uh, construction because if we don't have uh, uh, if we don't have the bridge and we cannot bridge tokens, then we can. Uh, it's hard to define um, uh, what is uh, the token of this network, right? Um, so our idea is to make a um, Ethereum platform uh, fast, cheap, and scalable for some types of applications uh, with, uh, let's say, less requirements for uh, like full centralization. Um, and uh, some devs which need you know, fast and uh, less expensive network migrate to this platform. So mostly it used uh, as a uh, staging network, right? Because um, usually in, in web services uh, and like this, uh, internet services, we have something like testing environment, staging environment, and production environment, right? In blockchains, we usually have testing and production. We don't have something you know, small, which is production, but also we can break it and no one will see it, right? Um, and uh, uh, so uh, essential part of this, uh, uh, of this uh, side chain is that native token is bridged to Ethereum and back. Um, so we, I think, we are the first uh, uh, side chain or uh, uh, to Ethereum which uh, bridged native token back and forth. Uh, we launched it in May 2018 with uh, security settings of uh, uh, two signatures from three independent validators are required to relay an event between networks. And uh, up to date, uh, this uh, bridge uh, uh, bridged 13 million of PoA tokens. Token price is not very much at the current market, right? Um, but it's exciting that uh, about 5% of liquidity of the independent network uh, is represented of, of, in the form of an ERC20 token on, uh, on Ethereum mainnet, right? Native token uh, originally was created on the sidechain, uh, not like you know some networks, they create ERC20 token and after they move ERC20 token to their network, uh, EOS uh, and some, some other tokens. And they use, sometimes they make like one-way process, okay, let's just move out of Ethereum to our own blockchain, right? Here it's a bit different. Sidechain launched with uh, its own token distribution and uh, emission. And after this native token was reached to, uh, to Ethereum in the form of ERC20 token, and after uh, <coughs> token holder decided to move part of this liquidity, decided themselves, right, no one asked them, uh, they, they just received an instrument where they can, you know, define how many tokens they want to move, and they move it. We don't know exact use cases why people move their native tokens into ERC20 tokens, uh, but uh, I think that's the main use cases uh, are between the networks. Uh, on the right side uh, in the table, you can see that uh, uh, native token uh, is listed on one set of exchanges, and ERC20 representation listed on another set of exchanges. Um, yeah, and you can see that uh, people are using this um, token bridge every day, uh, so that's very exciting that um, this type of uh, uh, interledger protocol between two EVM based networks exists in, uh, in production and uh, still you know, secure, not hacked, um, and works in custodial free environment. Um, so, token bridge is a uh, sorry for a complex uh, uh, thing, uh, but here basically it's a, it's a uh, smart contracts on um, two networks which define uh, uh, which token they bridge, and uh, a group of oracles uh, between them. So uh, it, initially, this bridge uh, was started as a fork of parity bridge, uh, but after we rewrote it, and uh, now it's a token bridge. And uh, it has uh, five components, uh, oracles, which observe events uh, on two networks and relay these events in the forms of transactions. Um, smart contracts deployed on both networks. UI application is a bridge UI application where users can uh, 
decide to define uh, uh, which amount of tokens they want to move. Uh, monitor, which uh, uh, observes balances and uh, can report to uh, both members, uh, the, to the users of, of, uh, of this token bridge that balances are different. And for example, if the bridge is hacked, anyone can uh, check this using monitoring tool that uh, balances are uh, uh, different, right? And, uh, and also this uh, bridge is deployed using uh, standard uh, uh, deployment playbooks. So we know when we deploy an instance of the bridge that all of our data is from the same, um, safe or you know, unsafe software. So it's good and bad, right? Uh, standard deployment strategy. Uh, but for our case, it's worked well. Uh, so we know that the uh, validators deploy their um, they bridge using standard deployment tools. And uh, this deployment tool is um, uh, independently audited by uh, third party. So this bridge supports three modes. Uh, the first bridge for PoE was native to US 20. So mm, basically, the two sets of operations uh, lock and lock and mint and burn. Right? So native token is locked and unlocked. Uh, and it's obvious because usually in, in public chains we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot mint and burn native tokens. Uh, and uh, on, on Ethereum mainnet, it's uh, uh, ERC20 uh, minted and, and burned. Right? When I lock, lock one PoE token on PoE sidechain, uh, validators relay this event. And, uh, uh, and smart contracts on, on, uh, on the Ethereum side aggregate signatures uh, of this uh, uh, related events. And uh, if threshold is reached, they mint new ESC20 token, right? When a user move his funds back, this token is burned, and the, lock, and the corresponding native token is unlocked. So it's quite easy. Uh, uh, with, uh, we support uh, one more mode, which is ESC20 to ESC20. Uh, it can be mint and burn. Uh, lock and lock or lock and lock, lock and lock. Uh, so it can be uh, deployed in different strategies. And with uh, X sidechain, we figure out that uh, on sidechain, we actually we can experiment with consensus and we can launch a new chain with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, consensus uh, pegged to the bridge. Right? So in this chain, uh, ESC20 token is locked and unlocked on the Ethereum mainnet side because we cannot print uh, and uh, Mint and burn uh, die ourselves without um, uh, without following rules of the smart contract, uh, and the native token is minted and burned. Um, um, uh, so what is uh, what is die? Everyone knows about die, right? So it's a stable token, programmatic stable token on the uh, Ethereum platform. Um, now it's, uh, it's a market cap of uh, die is less uh, because uh, GDP is liquidating and so forth. Um, so, and uh, here, let's introduce uh, XDI chain. I thought that uh, XDI chain is, uh, should be hard spoon. Um, hard spoon is when we take uh, liquidity of one network and move this liquidity to another network um, uh, and make next network complementary to the first network, right? Uh, but some people told me that uh, it's not the right definition. The uh, right definition of uh, Hard spoon is when we move this uh, liquidity, you cannot move liquidity back, like in uh, uh, Ethereum 2.0, right? You moved ETH to Ethereum 2.0, no way back, but uh, this uh, Ethereum 2.0 will be complementary network for Ethereum 1.0, right? So we decided to name it uh, soft knife, so we take a pie, make a slice, move the slice to another network, but we can move the slice back. So on this uh, hard spoon soft knife, uh, there is no emission, right? So when blast created, the reward is zero. So when we start this network, the reward is zero for each block. No pre mine, right? Uh, and there is no uh, reward in Genesis block, so empty network. And uh, the only way to get native coin on, on this network is to breach uh, uh, ERC20 token, define it uh, uh, in basically in smart contract with this, uh, with this uh, side chain from Ethereum to this side chain. So when the network is started, all balances of all native tokens are zero, right? When first user moved his die um, um, on, uh, on this side chain, then uh, bridge relay this event and the uh, aggregation of signatures uh, of this validators are performed on the uh, on side chain side and the uh, side chain basically print new uh, native tokens. 
So good thing about sidechain is that we can define the okay, guys for these smart contracts. We can make this execution free, right? So bridge is it's like system smart contract and uh, execution uh, replication of signatures free. And uh, this is also good for uh, protection of uh, customer funds, right? Because uh, we think about uh, uh, free replication of signatures that it's uh, very unlikely that uh, validators will run out of balances on this. Uh, on this side of the bridge, right? And after they aggregated their signatures, any user can relay uh, this event stream. So basically, it's like reverse plasma from my perspective, a form of reverse plasma. Uh, so, what's our benefits of uh, uh, this XA chain? So, it's compatible with uh, Ethereum, means Ethereum 1.0, right? Uh, it has all benefits of uh, POA type of network, that it's you know, fast uh, and it's uh, scalable. It's scalable both horizontally and vertically. So vertically scalable because validators can decide, okay guys, this hardware is not enough, let's make uh, bigger hardware, let's uh, increase block size, let's decrease block uh, time and so forth, right? And horizontally means that uh, uh, networks can be launched on premise, uh, both for XDA or uh, for uh, other chains. So like if this security model is working, then other projects can launch their own chains. And, uh, and we will see this model more and more uh, this year with uh, Parachains in Polkadot, with uh, Zones in Cosmos, and with uh, sidechains with PoE and uh, other projects. Right? And also, the most important and most exciting for me is that everything is stable. Within the, just think about this, right? Guest price is stable, platform usage is stable, all balances are stable, and uh, yeah. Is it exciting? <laughs> for me, it's exciting, right? So, like, guess price can be uh, can be fixed on this. <coughs> if it's not enough, you know, someone can launch another side chain with option of guess price, right? And it's defined in, in time. And um, yeah. let's go. So, people actually used uh, like it's a bit outdated, but we have like seventy eight users who breached their time back and forth. Twenty five thousand died, moved back and forth. So this uh, sidechain had market cap of 3,000 died a week ago. Now it's 1,000 died or something. And it's also a very interesting example, right? So it's a, it's a sidechain, probably, you know, tried to hack it. You know, it's, it's very hard to hack, it. you know, all these all this parts are audited and, uh, and uh, presumably decentralized. Uh, but market cap of the whole construction is, is very small. So, can be created this side chains on premise for different use cases and uh, for different DLC twenty tokens, right? Um, yeah, there is a blockchain explorer for this side chain. You know, people see send transactions and uh, usually use it. Um, there is a uh, there are some there are some problems with uh, uh, with uh, all side chains based on this type of consensus. Even though we're trying to make it decentralized and uh, introduced uh, our security model, which we call self-governed uh, POA. So in self-governed POA, valid validators can decide who are validators in the, in the network by themselves. So they have on-chain governance, and uh, they had ceremony when the uh, first group of validators was onboarded to this network. And after validators decide who are the next validators. For XI chain, our validators uh, are from the same industry, but they're independent entities. It's uh, one, the first validator is POA ourselves, the second validator is MakerDAO, and third validator is Gimit, uh, White Hat Group, and fourth validator is Protofire, Security Auditing Firm. So we have four validators at the moment, and each of these validators can decide, can create a ballot to add new validator or remove a validator from the network. And a majority of uh, two validators in 72 hours uh, uh, will add new validator or remove validator from the network. So no one can stop two validators from adding new validator or remove existing validator. That's what we call self-governed QA. For our first network, uh, we bootstrapped it with uh, 12 validators. Now it's 23 validators, and uh, that time to add 25 validators till the end of the year. For XIG, we have four validators, um, but still there are some uh, doubts about uh, decentralization of this solution. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what we're trying to solve in the second version uh, of XIG. Um, so with, uh, that's uh, that's upcoming uh, update for XIG. We plan to uh, replace POA consensus to DPoS, uh, basically replicated 
some good parts of uh, EOS consensus into uh, smart contracts and Solidity. And uh, yeah, we'll have EOS on Ethereum uh, quite soon. And uh, that's uh, for Zito. You're not excited about EOS? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have some 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 interesting parts, um, uh, but uh, uh, to we will use uh, this type of uh, um, we call practical uh, proof of stake uh, for uh, uh, for zebra control and incentive model. But underlying consensus is, uh, uh, is uh, our implementation of uh, dynamic Honeybadger BFT, which is well known consensus and uh, its uh, uh, strongest features are uh, that it's leaderless and censorship resistant, and that it's integrated into our fork of Parity client, which we hope to uh, merge with uh, Parity uh, later next year. And uh, yeah, this uh, censorship resistant gives some great. Uh, Features for any permission network because validated, which you don't see uh, all transactions, but they include them lives in unencrypted form before they create the block. So when I'm validated and I'm selected to create the block, I see some transactions encrypted and some transactions unencrypted. To achieve this, this consensus is using uh, threshold uh, signatures, and uh, this uh, encryption and decryption part is a part of consensus. So it's good for censorship resistance. And uh, uh, DPoS is giving us some other features uh, that we don't know who validators are. They can be uh, anyone, even a dog can be a validator on this consensus. And uh, staking token and native token can be different. For example, this network can use Ethereum as a staking token and may have uh, XDAI as native token. And uh, any ERC20 or native token can be a staking token. And uh, uh, also, native token can be any ERC20 or native token. So, it gives a lot of combinations what you can do. Uh, and Pancor uh, with uh, Ethereum as a, as, a, as a staking token, and Pancor as a uh, native token, right? And you can run fast text on this. Um, and uh, it's a liquidity of a staking mechanism will be bridged from mainnet or other. Uh, EVM compatible network, and uh, for our token bridge, we uh, were adding uh, uh, new features that uh, set of validators of a token bridge uh, will be in the same set of validators uh, as the network. Right. Um, so that's. Uh, I think we have some time for, uh, for demo, right? I don't know how to show uh, how to show it, but. And just you know, just a network running somewhere. Um, but what do we have here? We have blockchain explorer, full featured blockchain explorer called Black Scout. Uh, we can see here that uh, market cap of this network is uh, one thousand six hundred dollars. It's very very small network, right? Uh, uh, so effort to break it would be much much more, right? Um, so blocks are fast. Can be faster. Can be second, one second block, sub second block. Uh, with a uh, honey badger BFT, it will be instantly final. Uh, you see, some people use it you know, four minutes ago, three hours ago. Some, it's not me, someone else used it. <laughs> really. um, so, Black Scout supports uh, smart contract verifications, uh, you know, API, uh, uh, REST API, GraphQL API. Look at this, right? Like, you just can. But for free, and you can install it on your service, and uh, you just can on that show you uh, ads, right, and I'll steal your data. Um, so also, paid contract, so you can paid properties of this uh, contract and so forth, right, so it supports GraphQL, RPC, um, so basically this explorer is a part of uh, uh, of X sidechain, uh, but if you deploy sidechain for yourself, you can take this Black Scout blockchain explorer, and you'll have the same experience, you know, for free, open source. So that's good. written in the here. Um, yeah, there are some other members I, I just want to mention. You already tested it. <laughs> yeah, you already tested uh, Future of Ethereum 1.0 testnet. Uh, you know what is the most exciting? That it's supported by multiple plans, right? And it heads up to Afri. <laughs> uh, so let's back to. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's a bridge for uh, for XDAI. 
you can see some stats. You know, 79 users used it, bridge 26,000 die back and forth. So this bridge holds uh, 165k of X die. Uh, so it's it minted this native token, you know, 1600 native, 1600 native tokens were minted, and uh, the market cap of die. Uh, and you can see that people uh, uh, used, you know, they, 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 they did more deposits than withdrawals, which is good, right? Um, so who are validators? So now there are three validators, uh, no names yet. Um, but this model is not very secure at the moment. So one signature is required to relay this event back and forth um, from three authorities. So each of them can relay this. Let's see for for for, for our PUA bridge. Um, yeah, for 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 our PUA bridge, which is production bridge, bridge and holds uh, uh, 13 million PUA tokens. Uh, we have three validators. It's a subset of validators of PUA network, and two signatures are required from three validators to relay an event. So none of them can relay event without uh, another, right? For XDAI, for now it's. Um, it's a bit different. So one signature is required from three authorities. And that's because we're uh, deploying fourth validator from, I think, from from uh, from, brief, uh, from White Hat, uh, from Gilbert. Uh, it takes some time because he's in Latin America now. Um, but after we deploy fourth validator, so it will be three signatures from four validators are required to relay event between that person. And also there are limits as for uh, uh, as for uh, our other bridges. So for example, if all validators are hacked, we know that the maximum damage will be per day, so it's defined by limits on these networks. So let's send something. Uh, what do I have? Uh, I have 17 die on mainnet. Uh, but, uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, 17 It's our fork of uh, MetaMask because MetaMask are not friendly to sidechains and forks. Uh, yeah, they, you, if you have a sidechain and you will try to add it to MetaMask, they will say no. Um, so that's why we built our own uh, fork and uh, made it you know, this, uh, friendly and, and faster. And you'll see that it's faster than well, some other bugs. But. Okay, let's switch to XDAI. Uh, why I'm switching to XDAI? Because transactions on XDAI is faster, so we need to wait uh, less confirmations. So what I need to make to, to, to relay my XDAI back to DAI, so I need to specify amount and uh, sign transaction, and that's it. Right. So after I sign this transaction, uh, validators will see this event. They will wait eight blocks. Do you know why? Why are we waiting for blocks? Because Ethereum is proof of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, you know, Ethereum is proof of work, so there is no uh, less probabilistic penalty. And the same with uh, POA, uh, which is based on right now on authority round, also with uh, probabilistic penalty. And with Honey Budget, it will be instant penalty. So when we will send from XDI G 2.0 back to Ethereum, it will be zero confirmation. One confirmation. Oops. <laughs> oh, so it's wrong. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after after they waited for, for eight uh for eight blocks, and my X die is burned, right? So how do we burn it? To send it to how do we burn it? Um yeah, I think we just send it to this uh, zero zero account. Um, and uh, yeah, so Burn and Die is uh, the, the biggest account holder on the chain. So this uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, so after uh, after validators uh, uh, waited for, for eight blocks. They created the transaction uh, on uh, on the Ethereum side and they relayed this uh, event uh, to XIG smart contract on the Ethereum side. And this smart contract will 
send me uh, this Venn diagram. Oh. So you can see that uh, I received back that die on uh, uh, on the same side. So that's this that I can I can spend I can buy something from uh, Luigi. Uh, you know he accepts die, right? Uh, but if I need to, to run smart contracts uh, with uh, uh, stable best price, stable execution price, stable platform price, I can take some of my die, move it to this staging environment, and uh, play with it. And I think it can be used for many types of applications, games, gambling, insurance, anything. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. Any questions? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Two questions, right? First one. Sure. Why not? Uh, why having a native token? Why not allowing any token to be used for gas? Second question. Why not plasma? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, there is a proposal to use uh, any token for gas. Uh, this uh, this thing is interesting because uh, you know something that is created on hackathons usually should be like simple, right? But also to change how you think about things. Here, why we didn't think about it before and only figure out on the hackathon? Because for me, I think okay, we have native token. Usually, there are some emission rules how we create native tokens, and no one will allow you to create blocks without you know, without this uh, emission curve or uh, some inflation uh, model. But here, it's basically the network is empty, and on on the uh, uh, on event, it creates new native tokens. So for me, it was uh, yeah. okay. We can we can do this, right? Because it's side chain. We have this um, exciting feature in Parity called uh, uh, block reward smart contract, where we can define uh, reward per block, and uh, brief smart contracts are hooked into this uh, block reward, and block reward on the event from from the bridge produce native tokens. And uh, why not plasma? Uh, why not plasma? <laughs> um, can be plasma. Yeah, so the same concept can be used as plasma. Um, I think that the uh, uh, concept that uh, bridge, is, uh, uh, bridge operations are free on sidechain side, and anyone can relay back uh, uh, these events. And also that uh, validators of the bridge are the same validators as uh, validators of consensus. And consensus is uh, uh, anonymous, and the uh, uh, validators are anonymous. Consensus are decentralized. Um, uh, security model defined by market needs. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's very near by security assumptions. Uh, on one side, and on the other side, the side chains are very small, right? Like, and small side chains. Um, and now, this, uh, uh, you know, to implement something working and give it to users. Um, well, this XDI chain will be used on ETH Denver, if anyone coming. Uh, it will be used for operations uh, between participants of ETH Denver and vendors. So if you buy food um, at ETH Denver, you will use XDI. Um, but in, in, in actually, in wrap form of XDI. So it will be some, something interesting. Anyone knows why we will wrap XDI on XDI chain into ERC20 representation of uh, XDI? Any ideas? So no. You want it no, but well, it's not easy. So I think like first idea was okay. Let's let's, let's give this XDI to any participant. Right? There's some fund. I don't know something. Let's say ten thousand dollars, and we give some XDI to each participant. But if some participants will not spend this native coins, we we don't have any way to get native coins back, which are not spent, right? So that's why this token is wrapped into USC20 token with um, upgradeability and not spent. Uh, XDI will be returned back to organizers and they can spend on something else. <laughs> yeah, um, I was 
I don't know if this one, yeah. Um, actually, you almost answered all my questions. So basically, you hooked into the block reward and then you issue and you die. You make it. You make it right? right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an awesome model because this model allows like all of these, you know, special purpose chains, industry chains, which we see in the future, and especially transferring the values back and forth and to mainnet. I mean, that's awesome. So just as a technical understanding, currently, the nodes watching, they will listen to events, right? And they wait eight blocks or something. Yeah. And do they read them from the state? If this is still, so is it like, is, is it a function to call? Because, or does it just rerun? Yeah, it just, them from these blocks yeah. on to check if the event is still there? Or I mean, how could he know that maybe there was not a, a, a yeah, they have a over, so. yeah, they have a counter for it twice, right? So after the observer, so the from the state. Yeah, yeah, from the state. Yeah. And it can be a RPC or or a block alone. Depends on your security settings. If you want very light validator node, you will use RPC. If you want and, uh, more security. Use. The honey badger BFT, it's like uh, the improved version of the BFT where you have an encryption, and uh, on top of that, the smart contract governance is then like a a, this a voted, uh, I mean delegated uh, proof of stake. Yes, that's right. <coughs> so, uh, honey badger BFT uh, is, a, is a way uh, for nodes <coughs> or validators to achieve uh, consensus on set of messages and include them into blocks. And, uh, and governance and visible control define who are validators and why they are validators. In our self-governed POA, there's a, self, there's a governance where each validator can propose a valid and uh, this, if this valid is confirmed, um, then uh, uh, validator set is changed. Right? Uh, with DPoS, it will be a staking ground, like let's say a week, and whoever uh, stakes uh, more, uh, more likely will be included into, uh, into the validator set. And what is the, uh, you know, the, the unfreeze period for these stakes? Uh, yeah, one one staking around. Yeah, so it's yeah. one week. So yeah, you have to wait in one week. You have your right, right, yeah. So it's, it's one week. Um, and the voting, like if you you say like two thousand participants, why two thousand max? Like, uh, why is, it, is the, the limit of the smart contract how it's built? Uh, um, well, for honey badger, uh, a number of faults. Calculated three multiplied by number of false plus one is a security a model of consensus. For example, if we want uh, seven faulty nodes, up to seven faulty nodes, then it's uh, three multiplied by seven plus one is 22 validators. So, how many candidates is good enough? So, we decided, okay, let's, let's just take two orders of magnitude. Um, yeah, so it's, we can we can we can make more. You know, it's side chain. You can you can define block size bigger. There is a side chain called Go chain. They have a block size of 140 million uh, US per block, <laughs> and you can actually you can you can get the 400 transactions per second on Ethereum 1.0. So then we finally can run the, the uh, <laughs> Doom, or what was it, Unreal Engine Smart <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, on, on, on XDA, you can do it. Uh, one question. Sure. Uh, how could we, uh, could be it applied to uh, an energetic, I mean, like, for, <coughs> for, for, uh, for, for an energy supply, like, I don't know, I, 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 I like, this, um, for industry, for energy industry, how could they apply it? Is this, um, is it enough, it will be enough uh, throughput to to take data, the transactions from from this, from matters, like, I mean, right. the, from, 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 like, from, if you want to control, like, the uh, energy and the flow and stuff from a supplier to a consumer? Well, based on current market conditions, to have non volatile chain is not good, right, for consumers. So, volatile chain can be better because you know their expenses will be lower every day. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. Um, uh, but with, uh, yeah, they, 
as, as I mentioned, there is a gold chain that has 140 million uh, gas per block. And uh, yeah, here on Saichi, you can define it whatever you want, right? And also, you can, you can play with uh, other stuff. And we, um, it's great that we have uh, 1.x uh, modifications to Ethereum protocol, right? So which will make uh, improvements uh, in stability and scalability into 1.x. Uh, yeah, so. And because you are from Parity, <laughs> <laughs> we're waiting this from you, right? So, more optimization. When, when, when Turbo Parity? <laughs> we have Turbo was uh, Turbo here. Uh, yeah, now yeah, open source. source. <laughs> yeah, one of them. We are yeah, open source PR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, of course, like, uh, I think, like, I think, like, I'm, 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 like, I hope that uh, PRs from uh, like uh, for outside, uh, for outside people would be more actively supported. I it's my hope, like in part of the kingdom. Sounds interesting. It sounds like uh, some. Uh, it's open source, anyway. Yeah, open it's open. Source. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but PR policy policy can be you know can be different in different uh, open source projects, right? Try try to get the uh, Ethereum Classic into uh, right? <laughs> or in Fura. Uh, oh, Fura is another one. Uh, okay. Right, last question before the break. Last no, question. No. Um, I haven't followed the recent developments so much. Sure. Poor, but um, now you said that you will um, implement cyber tech resistance through um, staking. Yeah, but, but wasn't the original idea to have actual like proof of authority by being registered through like legal notaries or something like this? Is this still like on the table, or did you abandon that idea? Um, yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's on the table, and uh, that's our first network, which is volatile, and. Um, um, but, uh, um, that's that's a that's a list of validators of this first network. You can see, you know, twenty three validators at the moment. It's all DApps because it's all data from, from blockchain. That's it's a, by the way, it's a proof of uh, physical address. Uh, now this proof of physical address is open source and supports ERC seven to five token. Uh, so we're planning to contribute it to uh, ERC seven to five alliance. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh, I, I, it, it, it's kind of strange, right? So like uh, proof of authority network creates delegated proof of stake uh, consensus. <laughs> um, but that's uh, what market is demanding right now, right? You have to have staking. And coins created by proof of authority network can be staked in delegated proof of stake network. So for our first uh, upgrade, we'll use POA tokens as a, as a form of staking. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it's fine, like both models are working. It's hard to um, uh, to get any, like let's say peer, peer review on our governance model, because it's, it's very uh, conservative area and uh, people don't want to accept that uh, on-chain governance of POA network actually exists, right? <laughs> they, they think like, oh, you know, that's just some kind of centralized because it's, it's in the US, for example. Mm -hmm. Or some other arguments. It, 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 it's quite hard to get um, uh, some independent opinions about about this model. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's, it's interesting to uh, there's a, like all all ballots of this uh, uh, all governance decisions are on chain and uh, they made by off chain decisions by by individuals, but uh, but you can see that they have some uh, agreement and disagreement about adding or removing validators. So this guy was added by you know, 16 votes for and 3 against. Um, but before he had a problem, uh, before he applied, the same validator applied um, <clears throat> a few months ago and they decided not to include him in the list of validators. Why? Because he, he was shady from, 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 from the perspective of validators, because he used uh, uh, um, post box as his proof of physical address, and they figure out they made their own uh, uh, due diligence on him. 
Um, but now they figure out that uh, he's working for Google and uh, he posted his physical address and uh, all, of his, all of his data. They voted him in. Yeah, this, this model is working. This uh, great thing about this governance is that it's enforceable automatically. So when the pilot is finished, you know, any, any validators can finalize and enforce this action. Now, so anyone can propose a uh, new pilot with type of uh, uh, modified proxy contract, we could call it. Uh, basically, any validator can propose a replacement of the full governance model. So you want to add new type of ballot, like we did with uh, emission funds. Uh, I copied this model from EOS. So the network produces additional emission validators can decide how to spend this emission. Um, so like this ballot was added by on-chain governance enforced by supermajority of validators. Right? So it decided, okay, let's have this new functionality. And uh, yeah, this is enforceable consensus. The same model will not work uh, for, for any consensus, but it will work for DPOS. Right? So that's why for DPOS, to plan to mint of minting of governance token, which can be used to upgrade bridges and upgrade consensus. So the same, here you have to, you have, to have a, uh, let's say, not like this one, great. Uh, uh, yeah, I cannot add that because because my key is not the voting key, and voting key is a part of my um, of my identity on chain as a validator. And when I onboard as a validator, I receive three keys from uh, from uh, I, I I receive approval of my voting key, mining key, and payout key from other validators. So they include my voting key, and I can create those. Um, well, with DPoS, be, uh, uh, I have to I have to be a part of uh, active uh, active group of block producers, and also I have to stake some governance token to make decisions about. Uh, I don't know if, if it's if, if it's more risky or less. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Now it's time to break. And, uh, <laughs>